Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, sci-fi, thriller film called Synchronic. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A young couple lays in bed at a hotel, preparing to take a designer drug called Synchronic, expecting to have some fun. They take the pill and wait several minutes. The man then heads to the lobby taking an elevator. The woman remains in bed and waits for the drug to take effect. Not long later, the woman starts seeing shrubs and plants in the room. The man notices the elevator malfunctioning and sees the elevator walls disintegrating. In front of him, a desert wasteland appears. The woman experiences the same, with the walls around her slowly fading away, and a strange tribal-looking man appears through the wall. The elevator floor disappears, and the man finds himself falling onto the sand. The woman also finds herself in the middle of a dense jungle, and the strange man moves closer. She sees a snake coming toward her, and she screams. Steve and Dennis are longtime best friends working as emergency medical response personnel in New Orleans. They respond to a drug overdose. They locate the house and find two people on the floor. Dennis tends to the bleeding man, seeing he's still alive and applying the necessary medical procedure. Steve tends to the overdose victim and gets pricked by a syringe. He injects the girl, and she springs awake. Dennis finds that the man had been penetrated through to the back, discovering a bleeding exit wound. The police arrive and find a wrapper for Synchronic and conclude that the situation is simply a result of addicts attacking each other. Steve sees a copper coin on the floor and picks it up. Steve and Dennis take the bleeding man to the ambulance, and the officers find a bloody sword stuck to a wall. Later, Steve and Dennis take a break, and Steve plays golf. Steve examines the coin he found and sees a date stamped on it, 1721. Steve later has himself checked for HIV, fearing that the needle prick may have contaminated him. The physician recommends that Steve goes through a complete medical checkup, and he considers it. The following day, Steve is with Dennis at a family picnic celebrating Dennis's daughter's birthday. Steve sees Brianna, Dennis' eldest daughter, alone, sitting on a small boulder, and decides to approach her. Dennis says Brianna had always connected with Steve as she sees Steve as the cool uncle. Brianna tries to tell Steve about how she feels, but she gets cut off by Steve's phone call. At work, Dennis and Steve make their way to another tragic scene where somebody had burned to death. Officers inform the pair that they're unsure how the victim died, seeing no other signs of fire nearby. They do, however, find an empty synchronic wrapper as well as an out-of-place doorknob that has melted. Steve later gets a brain scan at the hospital and discovers he has a tumor. Dennis and Steve then respond to the earlier couple who had taken the synchronic at a hotel. The woman who has a snake bite on her knee is in a state of shock, only muttering her boyfriend's name. They find another synchronic packet at the scene, and the animal control personnel tells them they've searched for the snake but came up empty-handed. He also tells them that he recognizes the snake bite, which could have only come from a snake that had not been seen in the area for decades. Steve then sees a bag from a vape shop where the victim got the synchronic. The hotel caretaker tells them he heard a loud bang from the elevator shaft, and Dennis goes to look. He opens the elevator doors and finds the woman's boyfriend at the bottom of the shaft, dead, his face filled with euphoria. On their way to the hospital, Dennis notices Steve taking painkillers more frequently. At the hospital, a doctor tells Steve that the tumor is cancerous, aggressive, and affects his pineal gland. The doctor tells Steve he may have as little as six weeks left to live or as much as several decades. It all depends on how he'll react to the medication and therapy. Later, Steve considers telling Dennis the news but holds off. Dennis plays basketball with Brianna, trying to connect with her. He's worried that he may have gone a little distant as a father and is concerned about Brianna's well-being. Brianna tells Dennis that she's not going through something terrible. She's just worried that she still doesn't know what to do with her life. She'll soon be going to college, and she's not sure whether or not the path she's taking is the right one for her. Dennis hands Steve a birthday present at a bar, a nifty desk lamp with a science theme to it. Dennis then opens up about doubts he has about his marriage. He's still unsure if being a family man is what he wants. He looks at Steve's lifestyle and can't help but feel jealous of the bachelor's life. Dennis finally confronts Steve about all the painkillers he's been taking, concerned that Steve may develop a morphine addiction. Steve doesn't tell Dennis that the painkillers are for his chemotherapy and promises that he'll take care of himself. The next day, the pair arrives at a house party where they're responding to a call about an overdose. They find one teenager lifeless on the floor and another speaking incoherently. They ask her if there are others, and she says a girl named Brianna was with them. Dennis is terrified hearing his daughter's name. He immediately calls his wife, and she tells him that Brianna isn't at home. He finally confirms that it is his daughter who has gone missing. Now that someone close to him has fallen victim to Synchronic, Steve decides to visit the vape shop that sells Synchronic and buys all the remaining packets. A man sees Steve buying out the Synchronic and later follows him to his car. The man approaches Steve and offers to buy the Synchronic from him, even paying much more than the store's price. Steve tells the man off and drives away. At Dennis' house, he and his wife are busy contacting the authorities and printing out flyers for Brianna. His wife is distraught, thinking they aren't doing enough. That night, Steve is lying in bed with his dog hawking, when he hears a noise coming from the living room. He takes a bat and goes to investigate. He opens the closet and finds the man from the vape shop. Steve threatens to beat him, but the man pleads and tells Steve he made synchronic. He introduces himself as Dr. Kermani, a chemist, and has been trying to buy back the synchronic sold all over the country. 
He explains that he makes synthetic drugs, changing the molecular structure of legal medications and turning them into something that mimics illegal drugs. Synchronic was supposed to be a simple hallucinogenic, but he accidentally made a drug that allows people to travel through time. Synchronic distorts the fabric of space-time, allowing people to cross over to different periods. Synchronic has the most significant impact on a person's pineal gland. He explains adults with a developed pineal gland can only appear as shadows or ghosts in the past, but younger people who have an underdeveloped pineal gland can travel entirely and can even get stuck in a different time. Kermani spent his time tracking down all the synchronic to destroy them, and the vape shop was his final stop. Steve tells him that he flushed the synchronic down the toilet and orders Kermani to leave. Kermani agrees, believing all synchronic had been eliminated. But it's revealed that Steve didn't flush the synchronic down the toilet but only threw them in the trash. The following day, Steve is at his chemotherapy session. Once he finishes, he immediately feels the side effects and starts vomiting randomly. At work, Steve is exhausted all the time. Dennis gets a call from the hospital, informing him there's a missing supply of morphine. He immediately suspects Steve, not knowing about his chemotherapy and seeing Steve taking more painkillers. They soon get another call about a man with a broken leg and head to the location. They find the victim but are unable to communicate because he spoke a different language. They start treating the man, and Dennis begins giving Steve instructions. Steve is annoyed, saying he knows how to do his job, but Dennis answers back he doesn't, implying Steve came to work drunk on morphine. As they head out, they get into an argument. Dennis calls Steve a manchild, and Steve calls out Dennis for constantly complaining about his life even if there's nothing to complain about. They start throwing fists at each other, but the ambulance driver breaks them apart. Steve leaves, heading back home alone. That night, Steve examines the coin he got from the crime scene and considers trying synchronic. A few minutes pass, and bright lights fill his living room. He turns and sees a swamp land slowly appearing around him, his living room wall slowly disappearing. His living room disappears entirely, and he's left in a swamp. He looks around, smelling and touching everything, in disbelief of what he's seeing. A man stalks him from a distance, muttering a prayer. Steve then sees a crocodile approaching him, and he backs away, also seeing that he's starting to disappear. The stalker is revealed to be a Spanish conquistador, and he starts charging at Steve. Steve is terrified, caught between the hungry crocodile and a sword-wielding madman, just as the Spaniard brings his sword down on him, Steve appears back at his living room, Hawking staring at him in curiosity. He almost dismisses what happened as a dream until he sees a slash mark on the floor from the conquistador's sword. Steve decides to document his experience with a video camera and narrates that the pill allows him to go back in time for seven minutes. He suspects that the same thing could have happened to Brianna. He takes another pill and slowly disappears. He reappears in the middle of a frozen wasteland and immediately starts freezing. He sees a silhouette approaching him, but he collapses from the cold. Seven minutes pass, and he reappears in his living room, shivering. He discovers that his destination time period is dependent on his location in the living room. He tries again, this time wearing a thick coat and carrying firewood. He arrives at the frozen landscape again, and he manages to start a fire. A figure approaches him, pointing a spear. The figure comes closer, and Steve sees he's a caveman. He touches the caveman's spear, and the caveman lowers it. Steve offers the caveman a seat, and they sit across from each other. Steve slowly returns to the present, observing that the caveman, who was probably younger than him, looks decades older. With his triumphant return to the Ice Age, Steve confirms that wherever he stands determines what period he arrives in. The following morning, Dennis and his wife are having more trouble with their marriage, Brianna's disappearance creating a heavy burden on their relationship. Steve hears from the radio that Dr. Kermani had committed suicide. That night, Steve thinks about the copper coin, the sword, and the doorknob, the three things that the paramedics found with the victims. He tries to experiment, aiming to bring Hawking with him to the past. He plans to take the synchronic, and as he starts disappearing, he'll embrace Hawking. He successfully brings Hawking back with him. Unfortunately, they arrive at a period where most of the population still has a high level of discrimination towards race. They pop up in a house where a man chases them away. Steve and Hawking escape but see that everyone in the town looks at them in the same way. Seven minutes pass and Steve doesn't disappear. He decides to return to the house where he and Hawking appeared in. Steve takes another pill, and they sneak back in, but the man discovers them. The man calls to his friends, and they appear in white drapes. Chaos ensues in the living room, and Steve gets separated from Hawking. Before the men could shoot Steve, he reappears in his living room without Hawking. He hears Hawking whimpering and runs to the window to see Hawking slowly fading away. Steve then makes two more discoveries. First, if seven minutes go by and you are not at the place where you first appeared, you'll be stuck at the time you went to. Second, you should hug tightly whatever you bring with you, whether to the past or the present, seeing that he only brought back Hawking's leash. Unfortunately, he can no longer retrieve Hawking as he has too few pills to make the journey. Steve then decides to head back to the university dorm, where they discovered Brianna missing. One of the teenagers earlier said they saw Brianna sitting at a spot before disappearing, and Steve tries to travel at the exact location. He ends up in the middle of a forest where several men conduct a ritual and mistake him for a spirit they've summoned. They swarm him, and Steve makes a run back to the tree where he came from. Fortunately, he was able to grab hold of a lawn chair and got transported back to the present. The teenager who told him about Brianna reappears and clarifies that Brianna had wandered off. 
she didn't actually disappear from that specific spot. Steve later meets with Dennis at a bar and the two talk. Dennis informs Steve that he might be getting a divorce. He feels guilty about not fulfilling the promise he made to his wife on their wedding day. She's loved him unconditionally, and he feels guilty, feeling like he hasn't been returning the love. He says that Brianna was the only one keeping their marriage afloat, and now that she's gone, he feels that nothing is holding them together. Steve then reveals that he'd exchange his bachelor life with Dennis's stable married life in a heartbeat. Dennis is surprised, seeing that he envies Steve's lifestyle. Steve then reveals the truth about his brain tumor. Dennis is dumbfounded and in complete shock upon hearing the news. Steve tries to calm Dennis down by telling him he's been doing chemotherapy. The two reconcile, with Dennis revealing that it was actually their ambulance driver who had been stealing the morphine. At a cemetery, Steve shows Dennis video footage of the evidence of Synchronic's effects. Dennis is in more fear than shock, knowing that Brianna had been plunged back into the past. Dennis then realizes that Brianna may have left a message for them to decipher in the present. Steve remembers a small boulder at a local park where Brianna had been sitting earlier. On the stone written is the word, always. Steve decides that could have possibly been where Brianna was when she got transported. With only two pills left, Steve takes the synchronic and gets transported to the time of the American Civil War. The sound of bombs and gunshots fills the air, and Steve runs to a bunker. In it, he finds a mound of a dead soldier as he keeps calling out to Brianna. He crawls through piles of dead bodies until he finally hears Brianna calling to him. Brianna is glad to see her uncle Steve coming to the rescue. Steve hands Brianna the last pill, and she swallows it. Steve explains that they have to reach the boulder in seven minutes or else they'd be stuck in the past forever. They make a break for the boulder, but Steve had been shot and Brianna helps him across. A random soldier appears, holding them at bay and calling Steve a slave. Steve's seven minutes run out, and he's stuck in his current time. He's now only focused on getting Brianna back to the present. Steve sees a mine in front of the soldier, and he tries baiting him to get him to step on the mine. Unfortunately, the soldier steps over it and prepares to shoot Steve. Brianna disappears, and a massive explosion rocks Steve and the soldier. The soldier loses balance and steps on the landmine, exploding him to pieces. Steve rises to his feet and sits on the boulder. In the present time, Brianna reappears, and Dennis hugs her. They then see Steve appearing ghostly on the boulder before fading into nothing, stuck in the past. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.